Thank you, Mr. Speck. That leads us right into giving thanks to God for this Independence Weekend, independent from the power of evil, for lifting us and guiding us to share your very best and your good news in a way that edifies neighbor and glorifies you. Gracious God, amen. We also want to lift up thanks and praise for the Antalovich family who have donated the air conditioning in the sanctuary in loving memory of Mrs. Antalovich. We praise you, dear Lord, for their generosity. May you be blessed by our easy breathing and comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. We ask that your prayers be with the family of Anita Kerr, who has passed to the church triumphant. Services for her will be here at Grace this Friday at 10. So please keep her family in your prayers. Any other announcements? Please. Happy birthday, Paul. Any other birthdays? Joe has a birthday. Happy birthday, Joe. America has a birthday. Happy birthday, America. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Any others? Good morning, uh, Vacation Bible Schools this Wednesday. <laughs> so um, I need some audience participation. Okay, all I need you guys to do is I'm going to say, from here we go to there, and everyone else says, where's there, Caitlin? Where's there, Caitlin? All right, so nice and loud, please. From here we go to there. Where's, Where's there, there, Caitlin? Why to Vacation Bible School this Wednesday. We do need some help with registration. Please, please help out just for an hour. And we also would like some help with our security just to monitor the area, make sure everything stays uh, nice and safe for us. So thank you very much. And this Wednesday, everybody, this Wednesday. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, I announced that we're going to start a jigsaw puzzle club, library, whatever you want to call it, because I noticed when we had our rummage sale that we had a lot of closet jigsaw puzzlers out there. So if any of you have puzzles that are at home that you don't want anymore, that aren't missing a gajillion pieces, or if maybe just one or two are missing, if you would circle them on the box or whatever. Or if you, these are ones that you don't want back because I can't, I can't guarantee that we'll get them back. But we're going to use that middle closet back there that doesn't have any postings on it to have to get, get all the, the maneuvers and all that from working in here first. But first I need puzzles, so if you have puzzles, you want to put them on the back uh, or give them to me personally on Sunday, that'll be fine. Thank you very much. Oh, my apologies. Um, we have uh, one more thing. Uh, I scream. You scream. We all scream for. Ice cream. Ice cream after church today to celebrate our new member, the air condition, and our new intern pastor. Yay. <laughs> My name is Trisha Christman, and I'm the intern pastor here for the next two years. Good. Question and answer. Any questions? Pastor Trisha, where are you from? I live in New Sickley Township. Do you have family here? 
Yes, my husband is the pastor at Oak Grove in New Stokely Township, and I have a nine-year-old son and a seven-year-old daughter. And what's happening at Lutherland this week? My son this afternoon is going to Lutherland for a full week of camp on his own for the first time. So we're taking Woo. him up this afternoon. Big. Shall we stand together? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sin. God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, against one another, and against the earth, entrusted to our care. We are worried and distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all else. We store up treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors in need. Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we were laid low by sin and guilt, God made us alive together with Christ, forgiving us all our trespasses by taking our sins to the cross. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, you are the city that shelters us, the mother who comforts us. With your spirit, accompany us on our life's journey, that we may be spread your peace through all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Are there any kids to go with me to the Dead Sea? We're going to take a trip to the Dead Sea this morning. Are you ready to go to the Dead Sea? Yes? Yes? What river flows into the Dead Sea? Begins with a J. Jordan. Jordan. Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, and the Jordan River flows from the Sea of Galilee and up north all the way down through Israel and ends up in the Dead Sea. So the waters in the Dead Sea are the same waters that flowed over Jesus at his baptism. Would you like to taste those waters? Hmm? Would you like to smell them? Would you like to smell what the Dead Sea smells like? Really smell it. it. Can you taste it? Maybe. You want to taste it? Huh? <laughs> oh. It tastes like soap. It tastes like soap. <laughs> I tasted the water. Here, just put your finger here and then go. It's soap. It, it is. It's soapy. <laughs> This is soap is. made from the minerals of the Dead Sea. Hmm? Isn't that weird? Yeah, and when you get it in your mouth when you're floating in the Dead Sea, because you don't sink, you float. It's real heavy, and so you float. And you get it in your mouth, it tastes just like that. It's like, hmm. So Jesus set his face to Jerusalem. What happened in Jerusalem? That's where he was killed. And that's where he rose in the resurrection, victorious. Hmm? He set his face there. And so when I see the cross, I'm thinking that's where Jesus is headed. But sometimes we feel like we're in the Dead Sea. We feel like, ugh, ugh, it tastes funny. Life tastes funny. Mm, life can get hot and soupy. And then the Lord lifts us up. We float. We float on the Dead Sea to the resurrection in Jerusalem. Amen? All right. So share the good news that Jesus Christ is God. Is this garbage can? Ready. Ready. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for washing us with life. Amen. Bye. Thanks for helping. It'll be here for communion if you want to. Our first lesson for today is taken from the 66th chapter of Isaiah, verses 10 through 14. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. 
Your body shall flourish like the grass, and it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants, and his indignation is against his enemies. The word of the Lord. We will read in unison Psalm 66, verses 1 through 9. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Be joyful, all the earth. Sing the glory of God's name. Sing the glory of God's praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you. Yeah. Sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God. How awesome are God's deeds toward all people. God turned the sea into dry land so that they went through the water on foot, and there we rejoiced in God. Ruling forever in might, God keeps watch over the nations. Let no rebels exalt themselves. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. The second lesson for today is taken from the sixth chapter of Galatians, verses 1 through 16. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For, in those, for if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. We stand for the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70, 72 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. Jesus said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. 
Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone who is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide. For the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. Whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The seventy, seventy-two, returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'm standing under the awning at the Big, ba uh, big Butler Fair trying to get my fried pickle and a storm's coming and a huge bolt of lightning goes straight down. Not out this way, not out that, straight down. Terrifying. The awning was not big enough. Fried anything tastes good, though, even in the midst of fear. It makes you wonder, though, who did that hit? Where did that land? And I looked at the text, the gospel text, verse 18. And as the appointed ones are out there carrying the word of God, saying, the kingdom of God is near. God is present. Jesus said, it's as if lightning, as quick as lightning, Satan fell. When Satan falls and lands on your household or your person, we know what that pain is like. We know what that heartache is like. We know what that destruction is like. But Jesus is making a comparison because the laborers, the appointed ones, are feeling very joy-filled because they commanded in Jesus' name that a brother or sister be filled with peace and it happened they went to their house and ate their food and had conversation and offered a word of healing and the enemy all of those things which try to drive us apart and destroy us and hurt us that enemy they saw time and time again submit in defeat to the presence of Jesus Christ. That's awesome. So they came back to Jesus. Their spirits were up. You won't believe what's happening. And Jesus says, I do believe and I do know and I did see Satan fall. But what's the true reason and purpose of why we celebrate? Because in those Jordan rivers, in that baptismal water, 
who are marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit because our inheritance, our salvation is secure in Jesus' holy promise and his full presence. That's the reason for joy. Have you heard creation rejoicing? What would you say? You listen to God's creation every day, right? Every night. What do you hear? Percentage-wise of rejoicing. 100% rejoicing? Oh, no, we're Lutherans. 20% 20. <laughs> 20 rejoicing in God's creation. The sounds you hear. The sounds of rejoicing. How many of those sounds are rejoicing in God's creation? I heard 20. Is that the number? Less. That was the optimistic number. How many noises? Wouldn't you like to have a meter? You know, like a Fitbit meter? Wouldn't you like to have a meter? How many noises? How many rejoicing syllables come out of our mouths in our lifetime? You know... How many of the noises I made or participated in were sheer rejoicing that the kingdom of God is near? Wouldn't that be a frightening number? Look at that Galatians text. God will not be mocked. God knows the number. God knows it. God knows what we're about. And we confess right from the beginning we're not doing our job. Not well enough. That we are not right. The only one who is right is Jesus Christ. He is the righteous one. Have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Because a lot of time we're not rejoicing. We're broken. And so when you witness a brother or sister receiving that the kingdom of God is near and they're in their brokenness and they're turning it around to a, an offering of joy, you've got to be humbled by it. You've got to see it and say, they didn't have to be that generous. Why would they do that? At its core, right? They're celebrating their inheritance in heaven. Rejoicing! so that others might rejoice. That is the true and simple spirit of that offering. Have you ever been appointed? Have you been appointed to a position? What was that like? I'm just trying to get in touch with what it feels like for you if ever you've been appointed to do something. What does it mean if you were appointed to do something? You were chosen? You were honored to be appointed? You're needed? You're needed for a specific purpose to do something? Nobody else said yes. <laughs> Nobody else would do it. <laughs> I guess that is, means you're appointed. These folks are following Jesus around. Do we know if it was just men appointed to be the evangelists? We're assuming, but we don't know that now, do we? Huh? You know, the word of God is on the lips of women and creation is rejoicing for it. You know it. And it didn't start just here. So we don't know a whole lot about these ones appointed, 
by Jesus Christ in our gospel to carry this sacred word that the kingdom of God is near. God is real. God is salvation. That was the word that they were carrying. Don't take your cell phone. Don't take your car. Don't take your puppy. Just go with the word and share it. Peace be with you. If somebody says, get the out of here, I don't want it. Just walk away. But know this, the kingdom of God has come near to you today. And wipe the dust and go. We don't have to fight. We don't have to engage in violence or hatred. We don't have to. We're free from that. We're floating. That's dead to us on the Dead Sea. Hmm? And it'll leave some bitterness in your mouth. You'll taste it. It'll make you sick if you have too much of it. That's why you move on. Just move on. Just move on. This appointment is too important. You, I, we have been appointed by Jesus Christ to carry the message that salvation is here and near. So peace be with you. I want to share this word with you. Eat with one another. Favorite Fourth of July food of all time. A rich cracker, fresh tomato, your favorite cheese. A little bit of salt on top. Put the whole thing in your mouth at once and don't talk for a little while. <laughs> Just enjoy it. Favorite food of all times. Thanks, Mom. Share your food. Share. Eat with one another. That's it. Eat with one another. Are we there to wound each other? Are we there to cause pain? Are we there to provoke? Jesus appoints us to be here in God's creation to heal. You know what that feels like, right? When someone is just with you, you could say to be nice, but it's more than that because you know you're not that good a person to be around. They're more than nice. They must be appointed. There must be a greater purpose for us to be nice or to be with one another. Hmm? That's to, to help each other. To care for each other. And you have that appointment from Jesus Christ. I want you to care for me, Jesus, for all of eternity. And I, with the appointment that you gave me, I will try to care for others. And, and when I am off track and my actions are not rejoicing in your creation or when I'm spewing all those things in opposition to your fruit of creation, well, show me. Show me. I need to see that or I'm lost. And there's all kind of damage I'll do as well to other people in their lives. Because you appointed me to cure and, and to help and to participate in the well-being of brothers and sisters. That's why you had me here. Hmm? So while you're picnicking and while you're sharing a word of salve, a word of healing, a word of maybe just love. Hmm? Jesus Christ is growing something. What's he growing? Is he growing hatred? Is he growing anger? Is he growing jealousy or envy? Mm -mm. Nope. The one who fell like lightning is growing that stuff. That's another domain. What's the spirit growing? Joy. 
And if you see this joy growing, it's not for a satisfaction of the flesh. It'd be real easy to set a mark and say, well, if we have so many kids at vacation Bible school, it will be joyful. It's like a mark of the flesh that you have to satisfy to have joy. It's just the opposite. Because the Holy Spirit of God is upon us, blessing us with the spirit of joy, and we can share this joy with each other, and whoever comes, however many come, that's what we do every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. In the spirit of joy. Sometimes it takes us to Rochester Manor. Sometimes it takes us on the street. Sometimes we steal ice cream. I mean, buy ice cream. <laughs> it's joyful. And it's real. And it's a fruit of the spirit. So however many. But you know darn well. The more fruit that you're offering, the more people are attracted. If, instead of 20, 80% of our sharing is straight rejoice, you know people will be attracted to that. 80% of every sound that comes from our lives being a sound of rejoicing that the kingdom of God is near, and I'm appointed to share this news. 80% of my life given to just share that joy, that reality. You know people are going to be lifted. They might be in the dead sea. They might be in the dead valley. They're going to be lifted, not magically, not by accident. Lifted by the reality of God's Resurrection presence. See, he was dead too. And he's alive. So lift one another. In Jesus' name, amen.